Ad Astra is a space mod for Fabric and Forge with a focus on technology, travel and exploration. It has everything needed to become an astronaut including rockets, spacesuits and space vehicles. So, let's begin. To get started in the mod and travel to other planets, you of course need to build yourself a rocket. To craft a rocket, you'll need multiple machines that serve various purposes, such as providing energy and constructing the rocket. The first machine is the coal generator. This machine takes in burnable materials such as wood and coal and converts them into energy, which is essential to power every machine in the mod. For the coal generator, you'll need to hammer iron ingots in a crafting grid to obtain iron plates, a material used to craft many important parts including the next machine. Next you will need to obtain the main component of the rocket which is steel. By smelting iron ingots in a blast furnace you can make lots of steel. The next machine is the compressor which is essential to form these steel ingots into steel plates which are the main component of the tier 1 rocket. To power multiple machines without placing them next to the coal generator, you can craft steel cables allowing you to transfer energy from a distance. For actually assembling the rocket you need to create a NASA workbench. Once it is crafted, you can start the construction of your very first rocket. There are four different tiers of rockets and we'll be starting with tier 1. For the top we need a nose cone, 6 steel blocks, 4 rocket fins, 2 steel tanks and the engine, which is crafted using steel plates, a steel frame and a steel fan. Now we have our first rocket. Now we need to launch the rocket so we will need a launch pad. Place the launch pad on the ground and then place the rocket in the center. Now we need to fill the rocket with fuel. While traveling through oceans in the world, you will encounter oil. You need this resource to create fuel. After collecting the oil, you need a fuel refinery. You must power the refinery and put the oil in the left slot. Now you can collect the fuel and then shift right click the rocket to open its menu. You must place 3 buckets of fuel into the rocket and don't forget to place 3 additional buckets in the rocket storage space for your trip back to earth from whatever surface you land on. I don't recommend launching just yet because you do require oxygen to breed on other planets and our first destination which is the moon. Therefore we need a spacesuit and an oxygen supply. So we craft a space helmet, space pants, space boots and a chest plate which is a little bit more difficult to craft. For this item we need 2 oxygen tanks and oxygen gear. So now we need oxygen which has to be extracted from water. For this process you need an oxygen loader, connect this block to a power source and then access it. Place water in the left tank and wait until it's converted into oxygen. This process has to be repeated until you have enough oxygen for your journey. You can extract the oxygen using a bucket, spacesuit or an oxygen tank. Before we actually start the launch you need to follow these steps or you might end up stranded on the moon. In order to return to Earth from the moon, you need a launch pad and 3 buckets of fuel. You can place these items in the rocket's inventory and make sure you have them with you before launching. Also, you should take multiple full oxygen tanks with you as well as food, weapons, tools and soul torches or glowstone as normal torches will burn out without oxygen. When you're ready and you have everything, enter the rocket with right click, press the space key and lift off. You will enter a menu where you can choose your destination. For a tier 1 rocket, you can only pick the Earth or the Moon. After choosing the destination, you will descend in a lander. Be sure to press the spacebar to soften the fall of your lander or else it will crash into the Moon and explode with you and your rocket inside. If you want to return home, shift right click your lander and collect the rocket fuel and launch pad and prepare your launch as you did before. To remove the lander, you can punch it. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. You just reached the moon and can show everybody by placing a customized flag which can display any Imgur image URL. The moon is a dead and grey wasteland. You can find an important resource called Desh. You need Desh to advance in this mod and build a tier 2 rocket, space station and more advanced machinery. You can also use Desh blades to craft cables with a higher transfer rate and the wrench. The wrench can be used to extend cables in certain directions or disconnect them from other cables. Furthermore, you are now able to build solar panels which can produce more energy while being self-reliant. Their generation depends on the planet's distance from the sun, meaning that the closest planets like Mercury generate the most solar energy while distant or foggy planets generate less. You can also find moon cheese, a common ore that is not only delicious but will keep you fed on the moon. There's also a new mob called the Starcrawler which is a hostile moon animal that drops cheese upon dying. 
There's a new vehicle called the Rover, which is a land vehicle capable of driving on rough terrains. For that, you need dash blocks, a dash engine, and wheels. The vehicle is pretty fast and has an inventory to store items. Two people can drive it at once. For the Rover to work, you need to fill it with fuel by shift right clicking it and then placing fuel in the left slot. Now, it's probably best to build a lunar base at this point. For that, we need a few new blocks to create an atmosphere in which you can survive without our spacesuit. First, you need an oxygen distributor, which allows you to distribute oxygen in a sealed room. It works exactly like the oxygen loader, but distributes the oxygen directly into the air. To supply the distributor with water indefinitely, you need a water pump. First, make sure the room is completely sealed so that no oxygen can escape. Then place water or oxygen in the oxygen distributor to make the environment safe, allowing you to place water without it freezing. Then form an infinite water source on the ground and put the pump above it with the exit valve facing the distributor. Now power both machines and open the distributor GUI to confirm that water is going into it. You can also connect the fluid supply using fluid pipes, which work similar to cables. Craft a few pipes, connect both machines, and then use a wrench to configure the pipes nodes to extract for the extraction of the fluid of the water pump and insert for the receiving block the oxygen distributor. Once you have supplied the oxygen distributor with an infinite water source and sufficient energy in a completely sealed room, it will distribute the oxygen in that room. You can check if the process is successful by entering the blocks menu and clicking the show button. If there are bubbles floating around, the room is supplied with oxygen, you can now remove your helmet. If there is some hole in your structure causing the oxygen to escape, the menu will give you a warning. Simply patch up the hole and after that you should be able to take off your spacesuit without dying. A simple oxygen distributor can support up to 2000 blocks, allowing you to build a pretty big space station. If you need more oxygen, simply build more oxygen distributors. Inside your structure, you should also provide proper ventilation to ensure that oxygen does not get blocked when the door is closed. To do this, create a one block gap in between walls or create a space that leads to a distributor. On the moon, you might find large underground villages inhabited by Lunarians. These aliens don't need oxygen and can survive on the moon. You can trade with them similarly to villagers. They have unique and valuable trades such as space armor and oxygen. There are also Lunarian wandering traders who appear on every moon and planet. They have many rocket-related trades that may save your life, like launch pads, oxygen, fuel, water, and so on. They will only accept emeralds, which you can find regularly in the various structures on the moon and planets. There's also a dungeon on the moon. It's filled with a ton of loot, including dash, emeralds, and gear. There are also many corrupted Lunarians, which are moon zombies that spit projectiles at you and drop ice shards. In addition, each dungeon has a chance to contain a large room with multiple dash blocks and a cool trophy, the moon globe. It's a cool decoration block that spins, and you can even make it spin forever by powering it with redstone. You can also find space paintings in dungeons, which all have cool space illustrations. As you saw before, you can enter a space station instead of landing on the planet or the moon itself. This structure is pre-built and created in the selection screen, provided you have the necessary materials. You can expand your space station if you want to build your dream base above a moon or planet. They will always spawn in whatever position you launch the rocket at, so don't forget to remember the coordinates to avoid losing the structure. Once the space station has been created, you can return to it by clicking the orbit button on the planet screen. Next, we want to go to Mars. For that, we need a tier 2 rocket, which is built similarly to a tier 1. The tier 2 rocket has the same process for building, but with dash instead of steel. After landing on Mars, you will find a new material called Ostrom, which is used to craft more powerful space armor and exceptional machines, as well as a rocket capable of withstanding extreme heat, allowing us to travel to hotter planets. With Ostrom, you can now craft better fluid pipes with a higher transfer rate. Another new machine you can craft is the Energizer. The Energizer is a machine capable of powering items and storing large amounts of energy. To charge an item, power the Energizer and then right click on it with that item. The block can store up to 2 million energy, making it useful as a battery if you don't want to or can't take solar panels or other energy generator blocks with you. The block also retains its energy when broken, allowing you to carry it in item form without losing its energy contents. Furthermore, you can craft an oxygen sensor, which gives out a redstone signal if it detects oxygen. This is pretty useful if you want, for example, to have a control room and check your station's oxygen supply. There's also a new fuel production method called the cryo-freezer. This machine can produce a better fuel called cryofuel, which is more efficient than normal fuel, allowing you to launch significantly faster and with just one bucket. You can create it by mining ice shards, which are found as an ore on the moon and Mars. Insert these shards into a freezer, and it will convert them into cryofuel. Alternatively, you can convert ice, packed ice, and blue ice into normal fuel. Cryofuel also has some additional features like damaging anything inside, similar to lava when placed down. Furthermore, it freezes water, allowing for an infinite ice source. 
On Mars, you can find Martian Raptors, which deal damage with melee attacks. To get to the next planet, you'll need some protection from the extreme heat. You need to craft a rocket capable of surviving the heat, along with a powerful netherite spacesuit that will protect you from these elements. The netherite spacesuit is an upgraded version of the normal spacesuit, featuring fire resistance, more protection, and the ability to survive on Venus and Mercury. Before you travel to Mercury or Venus, you need to equip the suit, otherwise you will burn. Now, you need to craft a tier 3 rocket. This process is just as before, but this time using Ostrom. You can now land on Venus, a burning planet with nether-like features, and the most powerful ore in this mod is Calorite. This will enable us to build the tier 4 rocket capable of travelling to a new solar system. Underground, you will find a new and dangerous mob, the Soulful Creeper. These are much faster than Earth Creepers. They will consume part of your oxygen supply if you are damaged, making it easy to run out of oxygen if you are not careful. On the Venus surface, you will find many nether-inspired mobs, such as Pyrogos and Mooglas. These are stronger variants that are built to survive the extreme heat of Venus. Venus also has multiple structures that feature loot, such as netherite. We can now build the strongest spacesuit, the jet suit. This is an upgraded version of the netherite spacesuit, giving you more protection, additional oxygen storage, and the ability to fly. It is quite expensive, but offers you the ability to fly at high speeds and is really useful. There are two modes, ascending by pressing space, which will make you fly upwards, and boosted by pressing space and sprint, which is similar to flying with an elytra that is constantly being propelled by fireworks. In order for your suit to fly, you need to charge it with energy using the energizer. You can also visit another planet from the solar system using your tier 3 rocket, and that's Mercury. This planet is currently pretty empty with limited mobs and no structures, however solar panels produce the most energy here as they are the closest to the sun, allowing you to build an energy efficient base. Once we have found enough calorite, we can build a tier 4 rocket and leave the solar system. The first planet we will head to in Proxima Centauri is Glacio, a brutally cold planet with oxygen, allowing you to survive there without a spacesuit. Here you can find a mob called the Glacian Ram. This is an animal that can be sheared and milked for permafrost. This is the end of the Ad Astra base progression. There are also data packs available to add more planets into your game if you're still craving adventure. That will do it for Ad Astra. The mod is available to download in the description. Thank you for watching and take care.